Okay. Well, I think we'll uh, we'll get going into this it's just after 1:30. So, welcome uh, to the uh, Tech Tools to Fight a Good Fight. Uh, obviously, this uh, conference's theme uh, uh, from Nehemiah uh, 414, right? Um, this fight. And uh, through some of that, we uh, uh, need to be equipped uh, with, with some different aspects and, and, and different tools that we might be able to use in our walk. Um, it's not that the tools themselves are going to be the frontline defense. What was it uh, that, that we learned over there with listening to the other pastors? It is the Lord who will win the battle, the Lord who will win the fight. Uh, but we uh, still take a part in building up safeguards for ourselves and, and proactively setting up defense. And so um, <clears throat> let me just pray uh, for this time and uh, we'll get on into this, all right? Uh, Father, uh, I thank you, God, for a blessed day, Lord, in which we have to be here uh, learning as men uh, to fight how you would have us fight, Lord, not as the world would fight, but God, fighting uh, for lost souls, Lord, fighting for our families, fighting for the sake of the gospel, and, and Lord, turning to you who is the one who will conquer all, and uh, trusting you in that. So Lord, at this time, uh, just seeking to understand um, one aspect uh, that, uh, that we gain out of your word, uh, and, and, uh, and what it is to put on the Lord Jesus Christ to follow hard after you with that. Lord, would, would this be a time in which you would use to equip us, to encourage us, and use it as an opportunity to uh, have this utilize and spread into our homes and, and families and workplaces. And so, Lord, bless this time, uh, and uh, Lord, just guide us as you see fit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> if I clear my throat a lot, I apologize. I'm very tail end and cold this week, so. <clears throat> <clears throat> I am uh, Pastor Jairus, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm the children's pastor at Calvary Chapel St. George. Um, I've uh, been on staff about a year and a half or so. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been going through a lot of stuff, learning how to minister to children. And, uh, and I say learning because I'm no expert. Um, but it's been an amazing wild ride. And uh, the Lord is good and, and it is so awesome. Uh, being able to try to reach into the kids' lives and. And a lot of what we're going to see here today um, was instigated off of some things we got going on uh, in our children's ministry here at St. George, Calvary St. George. And uh, it, it was kind of a, a, just a, a breeding ground that kind of led into further things. And, and Pastor Rick was kind of like, a lot of this is up your alley, so why don't we have something that we share on this? I was like, all right, let's do it. So, um, so um, First question I would I would I would bring up here is do we have anywhere in the Bible where we would see anything that could point us towards how we use technology? Like where do we find technology and the use of technology in our Bibles? Um, and if, if I were to throw that question out there, I would say we find it in Romans 3:14. Um, you're not going to find explicitly thou shalt not use technology in such and such a way. Um, but we do see, um, and it says, it says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. <clears throat> so we're to put on the Lord Jesus and make no provision. Um, and I think in there we can find a use of how we, how we work with technology. And, and isn't it a part of every one of our lives? I mean, if I, if I asked you who in here had a cell phone, how many of you have cell phones? And how many of those cell phones are smartphones where you have internet in your pocket all day long? You know, and, 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 and how many of you, that it's not the only phone in your family, but multiple family members have the same devices, right? We're surrounded with this stuff. This is what our culture and environment lives on anyway. And so, um, as one way uh, of preparing ourselves to, uh, equipping ourselves to handle this, um, this verse, I think, gives us a lot, gives us some understanding as to what we are to do. And so, <clears throat> this focus on put on 
To put on in the Greek, it's, it's literally the sense of sinking into a garment or to array yourself with clothing. And that is an imperative command um, in, in the Greek writing. It's, it's imperative. It, it means like you do this. Um, now, I would hopefully uh, assume that every one of us with uh, intent wake up each morning to put clothes on ourselves. We don't want to walk out into public without clothes. There's, in, there's intent there, right? It's the same thing with putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. This is saying like you are intentfully looking to, to, to sink into Jesus Christ, to array yourself with him. And that doesn't just happen by just sitting there. You know, uh, you know we can pray, we, we can pray and, and, and ask the Lord into our hearts and, and praise the Lord we do that. But, but our walk with the Lord doesn't end there. Our walk with the Lord goes with actively seeking to grow in Him and know Him and be with Him and have that relationship in which He will be Lord of our life. <clears throat> and then the next part focuses on the word make. Uh, make is to cause, to make ready, and to produce. Uh, out, out of the Greek, that's what that one kind of leans towards. Um, again, that, that one is an imperative. It's a command. So we're seeing... Make no provision. Uh, so we, we, you know, it's not like we're just going like, oh well, if I if I avoid the internet, or if I just if I don't type in a website, or if I walk down the street and, and, and I and I just kind of try and you know keep my eyes down to the road or what. It's not avoiding. <clears throat> it has nothing to do with avoiding. It is it is literally producing a way, making ready, <clears throat> causing causing uh, things to be built up. It's like you are purposely building a wall to make no provision. You're intentfully making no provision to allow anything in. It's a defense is what it's getting at. Um, and so this is kind of where we, uh, uh, I would see uh, Romans 13, 14 being a very, um, a very clear verse um, of, of it can very, very well relate to our world today. It relates to all ages, but to what we know today. And so, one of the first things I'm going to touch uh, on, you, you, you've got your packets in front of you, and, and, you, and you know it's probably a number of different little uh, pictures and descriptions of what they are. We're going to go through these today. And the first one on there, um, because I'm a children's pastor, um, I enjoy ministering to kids, and uh, there's a new thing we have uh, that we're working in our Wednesday children's ministry. It's called Superbook. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to get into that. I'm going to kind of give you a good runaround. Because, let's face it, the children, um, if, if we're going to fight, the children need somebody who can fight for them while they come to understand and know the Lord. Um, and, uh, you know, how, how, how many of you in here are grandparents? <clears throat> okay, so you can use this. You can use this. You have children, uh, grandchildren that you can share this with when they're over at your home. <clears throat> and they, they, they want to do something. We can sit down and do this. How many of you have your own children that are still this big? Cool. Awesome. Same thing. You can do this in your home. I've got a little girl on the way. And she's probably four years out from understanding any of this, but um, at least in detail. But I guarantee you, I'll be using things such as this uh, to, to, to share with my little daughter when she's along the way. And that is the weirdest thing to say. Um, okay, it's my first. So, <laughs> um, so we'll get into Superbook. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, I'll switch this over, and hopefully the computer switches easily and quickly. Okay, no, I'm going to plug it. Technology. Technology, right? There we go. Okay. So, Superbook. <clears throat> Back in the 1980s, um, there was a cartoon that was released. It was a Jap animation cartoon. It was released originally for Japanese children only to be uh, played on the airwaves. Uh, well, on the television, cable waves, whatever. And uh, But this thing blew up. Okay. And it... it 500 million children around the world were watching this thing. Um, and it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, um, a couple decades later, uh, the, the creators of Superbook decided to reimagine it. Um, and they have come up with this amazing 
uh, ministry where um, it has videos um, which are released on a regular basis. Uh, and these videos teach you about Bible stories. And, and you'll notice you've got a, got a little robot up here. His name's Gizmo. Um, and in the videos, you'll see Gizmo and his little owner. His name is Chris. He's a little boy. And his friend, Joy. And uh, they get into situations in their family life where there's an argument or a problem or a situation to overcome and strife, right? And then Superbook, um, representing the Bible, the Word of God, actually comes, shows up, takes the children, channels them through time into biblical times, and the kids land there and they get to be there with the Bible characters and see what, uh, what happened in that situation, and, and Superbook is taking them back, thank you, Superbook is taking them back to a place where they, something in the Bible tied, ties to with what they were going through in their moment of strife, and they can relate to it. And so it, it drives a lot of personal application, uh, which is what we're about, right? So we're writing down application notes in the sanctuary, right? And so, um, I'll just kind of give you a bit of an overview with this. Um, I'll get right into the episodes first. <coughs> On this episodes page, um, there's about 26 episodes they've currently released. Uh, everything from Eli Elijah's the newest one. I'm super excited. I was watching through some of that. Some, some of that that's up here. Sorry. Um, right here, Elijah and. Uh, you know, they do a really good job. When, when Elijah starts mocking the prophets of Baal, they do a good job showing him mocking it. You know what I'm saying? But the biblical truths are amazing. Um, and you go through the life of Jesus, Job, Gideon, I mean, all sorts of stuff is in here. So they're really, really neat. Um, but they've broken down this webpage at superbook.tv. And this webpage is, is technically, it's the children's webpage. This is where you go with your children, your grandchildren, and... You can walk through this website with, with them, and it's a place where they can come. It's a safe environment. They play games. They watch videos. They go through episodes. And so looking at the episodes, we'll go into the prodigal son a little bit. And at the top of each episode, it has, it has information that basically builds out the whole story. Um, <clears throat> story about what the prodigal son is, um, tying together uh, what happened uh, in some of the video story. You can move along and you can click on character profiles um, where these are kind of vague ones on another page that get bigger ones. But you've got character profiles where the kids can learn about anything. Who's God? Who's the older prodigal son? Who's Jesus? Who's Gideon? They can learn. And it's very, very well put together. Where you can, I have stuff I'm going through and I was like, I would have never thought to share that about that character with teaching a child. It's like, I'm using this all the time with the kids. <laughs> Um, it's an all uh, go-to resource, and uh, you move on a little further, <clears throat> and we have um, this right here, Gizmo's Bible Adventures, and I'll open it up over here. It's a PDF. This is something you can do with your kids. Uh, it's a 30-day devotion, and really well put together. A 30-day devotion in which right off the beginning, they explain the gospel. They explain the process of understanding what we are as sinners, believing in Jesus Christ, confessing our sin. Um, and then it moves right on into, okay, once you've received the Lord, once you understand that, um, let's get into, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll pray, uh, but then let's get into our daily devotion. Now that you're a part of God's family, let's go into day one. Day one, devotion, we lead our kids through this. And, and have a great time. There's little activities and there's little questions they could do and little sections that they can read in scripture. And very, very awesome to do. And the next thing uh, I'll show you next uh, over to that is on that next side, uh, we'll have what we call, they call them the family discussion guides. And these family discussion guides are, we actually use these in Wednesday, in our Wednesday Children's Bible Club. Um, but this discussion guide, um, have you ever been leading your kids uh, in a discussion and you're not quite sure of what, what kind of questions to ask to get some discussion going with them? I, I mean, I don't know, again, I don't have a daughter yet, but I, I do that with the children's ministry, and I'll tell you what, especially when I was getting started, I'm just like, I don't know what to ask these kids. How do I relate with them? Well, the discussion guides, um, 
they lay out questions, they lay out verses that correlate with it, and it, it just it, it'll walk you through a process. And, and not only that, but it gives you um, usually about three application points that you can help drive home with the kids. So it's not that you're just talking about a story, but you're actually let's focus on something that that Susie or Johnny that we can take away from this and that we can that we can try and, and have a part of our life, right? Um, complaining or rejoicing, uh, found and forgiven, and, and you talk about forgiveness, and you talk about complaining, you talk about God's will, and then you tie it to the Bible. Um, those discussion guides have been really, uh, really, really cool. Um, and we've actually uh, started using those uh, with the Wednesday uh, children's ministry. Um, our teachers basically use that as kind of like the, the curriculum guide. Um, and it's been awesome. The kids, the, the conversation is going, and the kids are loving it. And I've, 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 I've been getting a lot of positive feedback just using it in a ministry-based type thing with these kids, and where the kids are they're really, really enjoying this. And um, I just want to give you an idea uh, what the uh, what the videos are like. Um, and so um, we'll click on this, and we'll let this play. This is about the prodigal son wanting his inheritance. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, Father, I want my share of your estate now, before you die. So, his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. between like eight and 12 little video clips from the full episode. And so like we're showing the full episode uh, in the children's ministry, but, but they can come here and these pages are built where the discussion guides and everything here is structured on the videos that are available for the kids to watch as clips. Um, so it's, you know, though it's not the entire video, you still have exactly what you need to work on with having a devotion with your kids. Um, and it, it goes on and on, further Q&A, wallpapers, uh, if your kids want to start setting wallpapers and they have these characters and Bible characters that are on the computer screens, it's awesome. Um, uh, the next thing I want to walk you over to and show you um, is the Bible. Um, we'll touch on it a little bit later as well, but uh, how many of you have used um, a computer software that contains commentaries, information, maps, so forth, so on? Um, I use it all the time. Uh, this on here is geared specifically to kids, obviously, but it's basically a study Bible for children on the internet. Um, and so you, you come up here, where you see my cursor floating around, and you can select any of the stories that they've released videos for so far. Um, they've done 26, as I mentioned, they're going to do a total of 104. Um, so it will cover a broad, broad area of, of, uh, of videos available and topics on the Bible. But you can come in here. Um, this one pulls up the story of Elijah and, and the prophets of Baal. You can come on, again, the Bible profiles, but it's right in line with the text. You've got the text right there where you can read it with your kids and learn about them right there. Um, and then you can come and you can click on the different characters and you can discuss what that means and who they are. And, and you've got all the details, right? And it's got the verses that correlate with it. It's not just the words of somebody they wanted to write it something and put it together what they thought it was. It is all backed up by scripture. Um, it's amazing. And then they have a, a, a daily Bible challenge devotional thing for kids 12 or younger or 13 and up. And they enter the, an email address and it'll email a devotion every day. A little Bible challenge for the kids. Um, videos, Q&A, games. Um, it's 
again, very well put together. If you can't tell, I keep saying it's well put together, but I'm excited about it. I love this thing. Um, and and it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, and then uh, one of the next features they have here, though, I'll sign into my account. You can set, the kids can set up a Superbook account. And we'll see if it'll load my name. Yes. They create an account and they sign in. And the kids now have their own little kind of like back office thing where they can, um, you'll see where it says shop and closet. They can kind of make their character, custom fit their characters. You know, it kind of gives them an environment where they're just playing, playing and having fun still, right? They're learning about the Bible. They're, they're surrounded with Bible stuff, but they're, they're still able to have, fun, have some fun with some little things and off to the side. And so they kind of get, you know, they get, they get to pick clothes and, and stuff for the characters that they're making. And, and then they can earn these badges. And these badges are earned by some of the different games that they're able to play. Um, when you get into the games, um, I'll come over here to the games button. No, that's Chris. That's Chris, <laughs> the, one of the main characters. <laughs> um, and they have just, they're just basic games, you know, they're, they're not like, you know, like Bible Bible games, but again, it's with characters they're familiar with, characters that, that they're seeing working with the Bible, and it's in an interface where the, the, the gospel, uh, the message of salvation is presented on every page, even on the game pages. Um, so games to play, things to do, and then even as they earn points, you'll see up here I have 120 SP, those are my points. You can build up your points, and then uh, they can even enter contests, um, you know, to win little things, shirts, movies, so forth and so on. Um, and the last thing I'll show you is Superbook, um, because this one's easy to draw out go along. Um, it's for parents. And this takes you over to a parents page. Uh, but you can join um, what is called the Superbook DVD Club. Uh, for $25 a month, they'll send you three DVDs of the same episode, um, and it's an opportunity for you to use as, a, as a, an evangelism tool. You know, you get one for your kids, and, and maybe you and your kids love sitting down and watching it. Maybe they're inviting friends over, and, and the friends are enjoying it. Well, you're able to like, take one of these extra DVDs, give it to the other kids, and, and they can take it home, or you can share it. And you know, it, it, It's an awesome way to be able to get, uh, get the gospel message and the Bible stories out into other children's hands. And $25 a month, an investment into the kingdom of God. Um, so uh, that one, uh, this is what we actually set up. Uh, we got set up on for the church, so we could start getting the multiple copies in here at the church, and, and uh, we use those in the rental library. But, anyways, in a nutshell, a um, little bit, uh, uh, some time on that. But that's super book, and, and you know, equipping ourselves again. I'm excited about Superbook, but this is, this is an awesome, awesome thing you can do with the kids, with your children, with your grandchildren, that, that they're, they're having fun, they're enjoying it, they're, it's entertaining, but they're learning Bible stories. Um, kids, are, kids are receiving the Lord, um, and, and, it's, and it's biblical, it's sound, um, and so <clears throat> I'm really excited about what Superbook is. Um, <coughs> Coming back to uh, the next order, uh, next one in line. Some of these I'll go into detail on other ones. They'll just kind of be a little bit more of a run through. There's one, uh, the next one that I have there is called the, the Bible App for Kids. Um, if you've heard of uh, Uversion, it's that uh, electronic Bible for your cell phone or your iPad. This one uh, is the one they made for children. And they're adding stories to it every day. You can see. Uh, a couple different, uh, there's three stories here. There's two that already exist. This one's about Jesus being baptized. Um, the one over here, though, says another one coming soon. And then they'll, they'll release these about every three or four weeks, and they'll have a new one. And, and it's a really cool thing, because then you come into it, uh, you click on the story. It'll give you the scripture references, where they're pulling the story from. Uh, scripture references, you can sit down with your kids again, and you, you can follow along knowing where your Bible's tying in with this, right? But then when you get into the story to read it, uh, it's awesome. It'll read this text out to you, or you can read it if you want. It doesn't matter, but you can click. Uh, when, when you go open up the page, it'll start uh, reading it. Um, and, and it's cool, and it's, it's, it's narrative, and it's, and it's exciting, and there's music. But as soon as the story's done, 
uh, being read, you can actually slide the little parchment paper over and the kids can interact with the characters and they'll push on, we love doing this in the children's ministry, they'll, they'll, they'll push on one of the characters and, and they're kind of like, oh, they're like, oh, bow to Jesus. We push on a lamb and the lamb will do flip circles and bang, <laughs> you hit the stars and it, you know, the kids, they have a blast with it. But, and, and this one's obviously for a little bit younger kids. Um, but, you know, maybe, maybe you're not uh, thinking your, your child or your grandchild is where you can get into too deep of discussion. Uh, you know, maybe you need something that's just simplified a lot. Take them to this. Uh, and it's awesome. And, and from my experience, the kids love it. Um, <clears throat> another one uh, is the Bible.is kids uh, or Bible.is. Um, if you, maybe you've heard of that Bible app, it will read. You have multiple audio Bibles in the Jesus movie and on the adult version. This version, the kids can come here. It's the same thing. They'll play little games, searching for crosses in a Bible picture, and it'll, it'll read the Bible to them in a, in a, in a story narration. Um, and we use this one again, too. And the kids, they have a real good time with it. Um, and so that one, and, and there's, there's a number of other ones that, that I'm working through and still using and, and getting familiar with, but these are just kind of some of the primary ones we've been using. Uh, the next one I want to show you um, is called the Gospel Project. Um, if you've heard of uh, Lifeway, <clears throat> Lifeway Ministries, what, what does that have on there? Lifeway Christian Resources. Um, the Gospel Project. This one, the app is free to download. And I'll turn this so you can see it, hopefully. Come on, move. Okay, it doesn't want to move. So I, I might be a little off on this one. But um, anyways, you can, if you can see that kind of sideways, I'm really sorry. Um, yeah, I turned it. Oh, there we go. There, there we go. How to shake it. Okay, so you can, you have a library of stories to pick from. I think there's a total of about nine, not, not just stories, but it's a compilation of stories. Um, where you really have a number of weeks that you can go through uh, different stories with your children. And, and um, uh, they range uh, from about, uh, if you want to download them for your iPhone, it's about 99 cents for a story packet. For an iPad, it's about $3. Um, and, you know, what's, what's a $3 investment? I mean, how, how many times, you know, do we buy candy for our kids and, you know, the bag of candy costs five bucks, you know what I mean? This they're getting fed, you know, the Word of God, right? So, um, but it, it has an awesome, uh, awesome interface where they come in here and, and it just breaks it down. Jesus' early ministry, Jesus performed miracles, Jesus preached. Uh, you come in and select whatever it is you want, and like they touch on everything in this. Um, Jesus meets Nicodemus, and um, you can come into it and you can see uh, some. It'll actually play a little video, and I was going to show up, but for sake of time, I'm not going to. Um, but it, you know, it'll have a little video that'll, again, tell the Bible story. Uh, the ones we've been seeing recently, it, it's real fun. They use the little uh, brown paper bag puppets, but it's like in a digital interface, so you don't see their arms and the paper bag puppets are walking around. They're telling a story, and I, I used this last Sunday, teaching Sunday school. The kids were all over it. Um, <coughs> Just really, really neat. And, and beyond that, it has little games and activities. You've got flashcards. You've got, you've got memory games. You've got coloring pages, um, electronic coloring pages. That's cool. Um, a lot less messy. Um, more videos. You've got music. Um, it goes on and on and on. A um, little bit of an investment. But like I say, little bit of an investment. But it's got a lot of awesome, uh, awesome material. It, it, it packs a punch. Um, and you'll see a little bit later, what, um, I'll touch on it very, very briefly later, but this one's the kids app. They have one for students and they have one for adults as well. So maybe you're using this as a devotion with your kids, uh, as a daily time when you're working it with your kids. <clears throat> but then maybe you've got high schooler or maybe you've got a, uh, a, a college student, a child that's living in the home. You're able to go through the students one with them. Uh, and then maybe you and your wife want to use the one that's for adults. Um, they're, they're very well put together. Um, so just wanted to, uh, that will sum up uh, basically the, the children's ministry section. And put this back. Okay, cool. <clears throat> the next.
next one must be part of it. Okay. Next one will switch to. We're going to get into um, content filtering and websites. Content filtering websites and apps. Um, this part, um, if I didn't touch on it before, uh, that part was for children. That ties in line with put on the Lord Jesus Christ. I should have said that. Um, this part, content filtering, websites, applications. This is this will get into our making all provision of the flesh for the flesh. So the first one to touch on here, canine web protection. Um, I just had the, uh, I had a totally, I just, I know, my life's blank. Kirk, I'm sorry. I know Kirk, he serves with me in the Sunday school and I just, I, yeah, I could have read that too. Okay. Kirk came up and was asking me if I'd heard of Covenant Eyes. Um, maybe some of you heard of that in there. It's a web filter. Uh, it, it's a web filter for, for internet protecting from pornography and dangerous other subjects and, and those sort of things. And it has uh, sets uh, setups uh, that are more for um, accountability. The, the main thing is the accountability part. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, it'll track where you're going, the websites you're going on, that sort of thing, and, and it'll send email logs to whoever your accountability partner is. I don't have that one that I'm touching on in here, uh, but he just came up and right before we got started and, and brought that up, and so I thought I'd throw that one out there. Covenant Eyes. Um, and uh, it's, I think he's saying it's 12 or 14 bucks for a family per month, um, and uh, just another good, another good resource. And um, uh, this one, Canine Web Protection, um, it's free. Um, it, it, it's a free resource. Uh, you can come here, and, and this one has actually been promoted on all sorts of different news feeds and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but it's available for your Windows PC, for your Mac, for your iPhone, for your iPod, for iPad, Android. It's on all of them. The only difference is on the, on the mobile devices, you can't set content filtering settings. It just has a hard coded that's going to block web blocks. Um, not that that's a bad thing, um, but on the web, on the on the computer interface, you're able to modify, you know, you choose your settings and that sort of thing. Um, in fact, uh, just to get into uh, showing you what the settings are, view internet activity. Um, I'll log into this real quick. <clears throat> Sometimes, you know, the web filters aren't perfect, um, but you come into the internet activity summary, and it'll tell you where you're getting your web hits, what kind of subjects it's registering your web hits at. Obviously, you can tell I search a lot about computers and internet. That's kind of my world, <laughs> apart from the children's ministry. Um, web applications, online storage, content, sort of like, like, and then religion. I, I, I wish I could have moved religion to the top. That might have made me look better, but um, no. <laughs> Uh, but it tracks these things, and, and so while this one, not unlike Covenant Eyes, you know, it doesn't email you logs, you do have a log that, um, you know, maybe there is a, still an accountability partner in the home uh, where they're able to log in and track what you're doing. And you can click on any of these subjects and any of these categories, and it will tell you what websites were hit and that sort of thing. Um, I have noticed, just like every, you know, every web filter, none of them's perfect. Um, I think the, the most accurate one I've seen people boast of is about 96% accurate. You're still going to get hits and results uh, that aren't quite accurate. But is it better to have a, a, a miscategorized block website than having other stuff pop up that shouldn't? You know? Um, but, uh, you know, I, I scrolled down to the, I was down here at the bottom, and I was like, adult mature content. You know, if I go to my work computer, <laughs> you know, I'm like, what? It's none of that. Don't worry. It's none of that. But just to show you, it'll, it'll come into here. Um, and I had, you know, I was, I was like, all right, what is this stuff? And, you know, because I was curious why it was on my computer. But things will be blocked that make no sense. BioLife Plasma. I don't think plasma, but supposedly it's adult material. Okay. I'm not, sh I'm not, you know, sharing that to say, you know, oh, that's kind of, you know, not that good. But I'm just, I'm just showing you. Um, none of them are perfect, but they are a good safeguard. Yeah, if you go into any medical research or anything like that, they will also block it to the material. Some of those will do that too. Cool. So, so that probably explains that, you know, and, um, but, you know, re really good resource. And then you can come into the setup. Um, and this is on the, on the, computer interfaces, this is where you can set your filters. 
You can custom filter, choose the ones you want to have filtered out. Um, you can come into a minimal protection where it'll, where it'll uh, block just a very minimal category of, of subjects or the high protection is like, you're not gonna get on any website ever. <laughs> In other words, just saying, don't spend your time on the internet, go read your Bible. Um, but it's, it's really cool. And, and, and then, you know, with the kids in the home, again, we'll bring it back to kids. If you want to set, believe the page, if you want to set time restrictions, you can set night guards and time allotments and those sort of things. And you can set website exceptions, blocking effects, what happens. Um, I think down here in other settings, you can even tell it to enable a, a YouTube safety mode. I mean, I mean, I, I search for, uh, you know, Bible sermons on YouTube, and sometimes you get some of the cat videos on the side that totally have nothing to do with the Bible, but they're very inappropriate, right? This, you know, it's a, one of them is in beta mode. Again, not perfect, but I have noticed um, when I have this on, I don't see as many of those when I'm searching YouTube. Um, and it's awesome, you know, because it's, you don't need any of that on your screen flashing in your eyes. I'm going to space it. We're all guys. We all struggle with such a thing. I, mean, this is, I, I, would, I would dare say we do. Um, but good resource. Um, here at Calvary St. George, all computers are required to have this on it, just as a safety precaution. Um, so that's canine web protection. Uh, you can, again, you can set it on your phones. You know, if your kids have phones, you, you know, set that on their phone and use it as their web browser and, and block Safari. Um, and we'll get into how to do that a little bit later too. Um, the next one, um, switch back over to this. Uh, how many of you have Verizon for your cell service? Um, good number. A lot, a lot of people have it. Um, I, I, I'm showing the Verizon one. Um, I'm sure a lot of the other companies do have these as well. Um, but Verizon has, uh, it's, it's a content filter. It's what they, what I have listed as, just a content filter, I guess. Um, and it's a free service. You can add it to your phone. It, the, the downfall is it only really works for Android and some select Blackberries. If you have Apple or, or some of the other devices, it doesn't work on that. But if you have an Android, I'm sure half of you are Android likers or users or advocates. Um, my nemesis? No. Um, <laughs> but uh, it'll work for that. And, and in fact, I think uh, Pastor Rick was saying that he uses this, and, and it's awesome. Because he, he, he has an Android, and then he uses it, and it works great. But you can come in, and this is just to show you where you go uh, to get it. Let me go into the full screen on there. You log into your account, go down to Manage Family uh, Safeguards and Controls, click on that. It'll take you to a page uh, that'll look like this. It'll show you what your account has. Um, I'm, I'm circling the areas that you can click on. Um, right there, free, add it now. Just click there. You can add your account. It'll, it'll be up and running. Um, you hit learn more, and it will take you to the page over here. And this is what I want to show you. I'm going to learn more just so you know. You can set settings for children 7 and up, settings for teens 13 and up, settings for young adults, and then no, no filter, of course, with no filter. Um, but it, it filters content on the device or on your network uh, on Verizon based on the age limitations you set. Um, and for, for ourselves, for our uh, wives, for our teens, for our little children, let's face it, I mean, I, I see um, third graders, second graders coming into Sunday school with iPhones. It's what we're at. And having something like this, though it doesn't work on iPhone, there's other options for iPhone, but maybe it's an Android. Maybe it's set something like that. Um, and, and you have your child protected through the internet uh, uh, interface there through Verizon. Um, the next one we'll get into, uh, we'll get into some DNS filtering. This one's a kind of a little bit of a, um, unless, unless you know anything about networking, routers, setup, that kind of thing, IP addresses. Um, it might not make a lot of sense right here. If you have questions, uh, you can get a hold of me. Um, my plan is to be putting together kind of like a little walkthrough video that we'll actually upload to the website that can kind of walk you through how to set this up. But what, what this does, there's Open DNS, uh, which offers free residential service, and then there's one called Dyn DNS, as in dynamic DNS. 
a DNS is a it's it's a web host with which you route all your internet traffic through, and this basically filters um, your web traffic. Um, and this the the Dyn DNS we have this set up um, here at the church. So not only does all the church computers have um, K9, but we also have clean internet running through the router. Um, and so what it does is. You have, we, you know, right here, you kind of have a double layer of protection. If you're connected to Calvary Chapel Wi-Fi, um, you'll you'll run into this if something hits wrong. Um, you know, and, and I just to test it. You know, when I, I when I was setting this up, I was thinking I got to think of a website that I can search to test it to make sure it works. But it's not going to like be like, why are we looking for that? You know. So I was like, well, I'll go to one of the safer dating websites. So I typed in Match.com, right? And it blocks it. Bing! Pops up. Dying DNS, blocked web category, see your system administrator. And, and, you know, if, if you're connected to our Wi Fi, I'm not, I'm not telling you to go search for bad stuff, but it'll block it. You know, and, and, and this is something you can set up, and, and you, you redirect your ports on your DNS server in your router, and anybody connected to your home network will be filtered through this internet filter. And that's a good thing because, again, with so many people that have mobile devices, I mean, I can't tell you how many of the young adults have my Wi-Fi password. You know, we get together for fellowship and we're hanging out there and that's what they're doing. They want my Wi-Fi, right? They have this set up and it doesn't matter if they're on my Wi-Fi or not. If, 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 as long as they're on my Wi-Fi, they're not going to be left there with anything inappropriate, you know. Um, and you hate to think that would even go there anyways, but just as a precaution. Um, so again, I'll have a video, hopefully in the next week or two, uh, uploaded onto the website um, to walk you through that. And if there's any questions, I mean, you know, you can you can always get a hold of me here at the church, or uh, I'll probably even include, you know, my email address or something in the videos. However, it needs to be. Um, and then another one, uh, Pastor Rick uh, uses this one at home because they use InfoWest as their internet service provider. If you use InfoWest. Um, Two dollars a month, you can get a, a family filter through InfoS. Uh, it runs the same way, kind of as the DNS, um, but it's just provided by the, the internet service provider instead of a DNS router. <coughs> and he and he stands by that one. He really, really enjoys it, and he says it works very well. Um, so moving on to the next section, uh, tech tools. This one will still uh, fall under. Making no provision for the flesh, but some of some of this is it's a little bit more fun, a little bit more customizable, a little bit more, um, you know, it's not so much like lock down the internet kind of a thing, but useful tools and resources. Um, one of them, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming the Android has something. I'm sure there's apps designed for it, but this one, how many of you in here with iPhones recognize what this screen is? It's an it's an iPhone showing what? <laughs> Find my friends. Yes. You ever want to be a creeper and track people? Uh, that's it. No, but you can see. I can always see where Ivan Amargo is. I always know where he's at. And he can always see where I'm at. And I can always see where my wife is. And I got another buddy on there that I can always see where he is. He's a traveling missionary. It's, it's fun to see where he's at. You know, it's, it's really cool. Um, but yeah, it's called Find My Friends. It's, it's available on the iPhone, um, and you, you have to be—you know—you have to accept friends to be able to track one another. But you know, my wife and I put these on our phones again for accountability. You know, I, I mean, it's just—it's it's another layer of protection. It's not being snoopy. It's not being overprotective. It's just. You know, she can tell where I'm at, and even if it's just as simple as it's been a late night and Jared's just been at the church all day, and is he still at the church? Okay, yeah, he's still at the church. You know, something as simple as that. You know, and, and sometimes uh, it, it it did lie to her, and and I almost got in trouble for something I didn't do. She's it, it, it plotted me in a neighborhood that I was nowhere near. <laughs> um, when I'm up in my office in the steel building, it kind of gave her a wrong signal, and she's like, and she snapped a picture and sent it to me. She's like. Where are you? <laughs> and I was like, do you see the big pink circle around it? She's like, yeah. I was like, that means you've got a very bad signal. <laughs> and and, and it'll, it'll, it'll focus in. The picture doesn't show it. But when it's a very tight circle, uh, the, 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 there's a little pink circle. It means strong signal. And when it's a very broad signal, it means it has no idea where you are. <laughs> so if you use it, it works 90% of the time I've, I've, I've used it. But if you use it, 
and you ever get accused of something like that, now you know. Um, uh, but it, it, it's useful, uh, very, very, very useful, and, and, and I mean, for any situation, it's, it's not just, you know, keeping tabs on, you know, are, are they somewhere they shouldn't be. My wife travels a lot for work, and, you know, when she's driving up and down the freeway to Cedar and out into Milford and blah, 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 like, I can get an idea where she's at, if she's safe, if, you know, I've, I've had her call me up and be like, hey, the van tire blew up, you know, we need help. I could look her up and pinpoint her, and I could tell exactly where she's at if I need to help. Medical issues, too. <clears throat> What's that? Medical issues. Medical issues. Yeah, any number of reasons. Do they have an application like that for any rooms? I believe they do. Um, I don't. I don't know what they're what they're called. He just put it on his. Oh, did you? What would you find? It's called Find My Friends. Find My Friends for Android. Wow, all right, so you can search on my friends for Android, and I don't, know, I don't know if it's the same one, but maybe it was, you know, they saw that the Apple users liked it, so they developed it. That's cool, that's cool. Very cool tool. I, I use it almost on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah. I, I found a number of them on the iPhone at least because that's what I use. I, I found a number of them, but the, I, I primarily use this one because it just seems to work the best. <coughs> um, the next thing we'll get into is Apple device restrictions or restricted access. Um, those of you who have iPads, I, I, uh, pods, iPhones. Um, maybe you know your device will do this, maybe not. Um, especially if you have kids uh, that use your iPhone or iPad a lot. Um, but just to, just to show you, I'm going to set it as 1111 because I'll forget it if I don't. <clears throat> um, but you can come in here and restrict access to specific apps. Remember when I said download K9 on your kid's phone and, and restrict Safari? This is where you'll do it. You log in, you set a passcode that they don't know, and you could disable access to Safari, and all of a sudden, K9 is the only web browser they can use. And then if you're concerned, oh, well, they're gonna to go to the App Store and download Chrome, well, you can disable installing applications. Um, you, you have a measure of control that you can protect your kids with, uh, and even protect yourself with if you want to. Do the K9 thing for yourself. You know, I, there's no reason, no reason not to. Um, so yeah, that, that's an option. If, if you're afraid of the kids, um, you know, deleting things you don't want, or if you're afraid of them playing in the iTunes store, you, know, you can totally restrict access to that app. Um, if you come down a little bit further, uh, you have allowed content. This is an awesome way in terms of it's, it's a native filter to the iDevice. Um, you can change uh, your music and podcast not to allow explicit content. Um, you can come in here, movies, you can set ratings for movies of what's going to be allowed to come through iTunes, um, so forth and so on. You can, you know, how, how long to require a password, what kind of websites are allowed. If you go to limit adult content, you can have your allow and don't allow websites. Very customizable. And then, of course, privacy settings. Um, say, uh, well, when you get into any of them, what, what was the one I was thinking of? Contacts, photos, microphone. Oh, I was actually thinking about accounts. Anyways, any of these settings, if, if, if you don't want location settings to be modified with, they don't have to be. If you want to lock down contacts so, so your kids aren't going to delete the contact on accident, you can lock those down. You can lock down photos, uh, all sorts of things. Cool things that you can set for privacy. Allow changes, accounts, um, if you're afraid of anybody. I mean, I, I mean anybody, uh, a friend, a neighbor, a child, yourself of messing with your uh, iTunes account, um, you can restrict access to them even tampering with it. Um, you can even set volume limits. When it's time to take a nap and, and, and the four-year-old's there, you can set a volume limit, lock it, and they can't turn it up louder. It's kind of cool. <laughs> so um, I'll disable this uh, just for now, because I'm sure I'll forget 1111 later on. Um, so that's you know uh, just your restrictions. Uh, it's built into every mobile iPhone. <laughs> Just another layer of protection. Um, uh, good. Let's see, what was I? Was there something else? There? Oh yeah, I did want to show you something else here before we move on. Is there a cool thing? 
if you're in an app, we'll come back into this one, even though it's going to be sideways. The fact that it's sideways doesn't matter. Oh, no, that works. Okay. If you, uh, in the app, in the accessibility, I think it was, there's, one, there's a, a feature called guided access. Say you are wanting to take a nap and you have a grandchild or a young child that wants to play on the iPad, but you don't want them getting into trouble or things they shouldn't be. If you triple click the, the little home button on the bottom of your device, it'll open this up. <clears throat> and you can set a time limit, if you can see that around me. <laughs> um, you can lock the touch screen, you can set hardware buttons or whatever. Um, in, the, in the hardware buttons you can limit if they can play with the volume or if they can motion or keyboards or sleep or wake, whatever. But when I hit start, it's going to ask me for a passcode. Um, or maybe it's remembering my old one, not if I locked myself out. Um, but if I push the home button, it's going to ask for a passcode for me to even get out of the app. So your kid, you know, if the kid wants to watch a, to play a game or watch a movie that's safe or whatever, you can lock them into that app so they don't go tamper with other stuff. Um, just, a, you know, another safety measure for, for the little kids not to get into things. And they can, they can turn it off and on, but they can't get out until you tell you, come on, do it. No, it's not one to let me do it. There we go. There, good, I remember. So you enter the passcode and exit. And then once you exit, you can get out of it, of course, and do your thing. Um, just another, another cool thing which you can use there. The next thing uh, I'll show you is one called VidAngel. Uh, this is on, on uh, You'll access it through the internet, or through, not through, through a computer. Let me keep on closing it. Do any of you remember, uh, I think it was, there's a DVD editing company in Utah called Clean Flicks back in the day, and they got locked down because they were illegally editing videos and violating copyright law. Well, Excuse me. There's a new company in town on the web, on the webosphere. It's called VidAngel. Um, they, the, the, the problem with uh, Clean Flicks was they were editing and violating copyright law by, redevelop, by, by remaking the video and re-releasing it. VidAngel does it a little bit differently, and it's, it's, they've, they've basically worked with the copyright law and made a legal way of working with videos where um, you can come here and create an account. There we go. Um, it, it works with a Google account. Um, so I, you know, I sign in with my Google account and say you just come through and, and, and it has, I think they said their database is about 700 movies right now. Uh, they pull from, and I didn't even realize the other day, that YouTube has a rental system now where you can rent to watch full movies. I didn't know YouTube did that. Um, a lot of these will be pulled from YouTube. Um, you can also access other videos that aren't on Netflix. You can access TV shows, so forth, so on. Um, let's say you're, just, you're coming into any one of these movies. It's kind of an expensive rental for that first one. But when you click on a movie, it'll actually pull up, the next page will pull up um, a filter page where it will specifically tell you every word that is mentioned in that movie, um, every, uh, so those, those are the words, right? It'll reference alcohol and drug use. <clears throat> It'll reference sex, nudity, and modesty, um, violence and gore, um, and then highlights and such. Um, but you can, on these, you know, Say, say you're looking through these and, and just, I mean, just to give you an idea of what it does, it, it's not just like, oh, there was something, but you can come in here and you can see what it is that's, that they're blocking. Um, if you have it set to remove, um, it will, it, it basically on the spot, it's, it's, a, it's an electronic filter, it's not a hard-coded filter, that's why it's legal. Uh, but it will filter out those elements that you choose not to show. Um, and so, you know, you can choose to remove those. You can choose to, um, you know, I, you know, God forsaken or whatever, you know, like whatever it is you want to hear or don't hear, whatever it is you want to see or don't see, 
Um, it gives you control to filter what you want to filter out. And then once you click play, you'll pay for your rental um, and you'll use it. And um, I learned about this one from Pastor Rick and, and he's used it. And uh, he said it worked very, very well. And, and words that he chose to mute out, um, you can also choose to allow it to mute but still play the image. Or you can choose to allow it to just cut the image of this cuss word out or whatever it is. Um, but he's like, it worked very well. He just, he just let the image play through. It's like, you know, it's, you know, it's a big deal. You know, but he's like, it muted the words. And everything worked well. Um, now, of course, you know, we have a, a custom filter for lots of these movies. And, and so, you know, what we have available to us, you know, I, I don't show you this to be like, hey, with a filter, we can watch whatever we want. You know what I mean? Um, you know, the encouragement is still have use discretion um, and, and, and honoring the Lord, you know, and, and what it is that we're putting into our eyes. It may be a good movie. We, we may be filtering out cuss words. What's the story about, you know? Um, and for that, I don't have it here, but I would suggest on your iPhone, I think there's even a, a web app uh, for the computer and such, but there's an app and a website called Plugged In. Maybe you've heard of it. Um, if you're ever curious about what a movie contains, um, go to Plugged In and pull up the movie. Like it, it gives you kind of these kind of details, but it gives you a layout of a plot, story, story. It's awesome. I, I use it with pretty much any movie we go to see. So, um, so that gives us Vid Angel. <clears throat> go ahead and use that. Uh, try using it if you if you feel like renting a movie, um, and, and, and check it out. Give it a shot. Uh, there's another one. Um, I'm running really short on time, so I'll try and be real quick with these. Uh, there's one called Ignore No More. And this one, it's, it's kind of fun. Um, and, and some people might be a little bit like, well, now you're just getting too, too much of a control freak. No, I, 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 I would kind of see it as a training tool. Um, if you've ever had a child, teenager, whoever, that has a cell phone, and you call them, you text them, and they ignore, they ignore, they ignore, it's like, how am I going to get through to you? Well, this app, there's a mother that got fed up with that. And uh, she's like, so I'm going to make an app. And when my child ignores me, I'm going to lock them out of their phone remotely. <laughs> and <laughs> it's pretty cool. And some of the teens in here are going, no, no, no. <laughs> but um, it's really cool. Like, right now, it's for Android. Um, and you actually have to get it through, uh, through the Amazon App Store. Um, supposedly there's an iPhone version in development. Um, but again, you, you, you know, you call it for any reason, but you call and, you know, say your, your child doesn't answer, you text or whatever, for any reason, you can set it, create an account, you send a lock, it locks the phone, it blacks it out, and it doesn't allow the child to do anything except for call you back, or they, they always have access to 911. Um, but they can't unlock anything on their phone without calling you back to get the password to release it. <laughs> it's kind of kind of cool. Um, you you will see on the on the, uh, the, the handout I gave to you though. Um, there is an app that was released. Um, there's people out there that are like how I used to be, and I always try to find every workaround. Um, somebody created an app called Block No More. Um, so just be aware, um, your child could if they learn of this app, they could undo what you did. <laughs> Um, but just keep an eye on it. I'm just throwing that out there for you. Um, just to touch on the rest of them real quick, um, we'll get back into Bible study programs and devotions. And this one's for a little bit more on an adult level. Getting back on to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. The first one I'll, I'll show you. Um, I'm assuming many of you have heard of it. It's the Uversion Bible app. It's available on all mobile devices and the computer. Um, this is the this is the computer website, um, and you'll see the circle there. You can download the Bible app, or up at the corner, um, you can go to Bible.com. Um, this is if you type in uversion.com. But it is an awesome, awesome website. When you go to the actual website, you've got uh, I've got your menu options over there on the left circle. You can choose your Bibles. You can choose reading plans. You can choose videos to watch. You can choose RSS feeds. Uh, the other red circle up there, it will, again, play the audio Bible for you. Um, 
And it's a great place to go and learn the Bible. It, it has probably the biggest selection of translations available if you want to compare different translations. <coughs> when you go into uh, the category options, that the, the colored icon on the left there, um, this is where you can go. Let's say you're looking for another place. You've been through some other devotions and, and you want to look for something new. You can come into devotional. You know, they have devotionals there listed like general ones. You've got family ones. You've got youth ones. New ones, previous ones, there's community. People can get together, together and discuss Bible subjects there. It's quite a website um, and, and lots and lots of stuff. You know, you got Day by Day with Billy Graham there, for instance. It's a 366-day devotion. Our daily bread, it's all on there. Um, take that, and, and, and if you've never been there, download the app. If you've never been on the website, go to the website. Check it out. Maybe it'll be a, a tool in which you could use. Um, for your Bible study and devotion time. The next one, Blue Letter Bible, it's a pretty common one, uh, but it's a very powerful one. You can search any reference, verse, keyword, or anything right there, and you can select your key, uh, your uh, translation. Um, this will open up a world of, uh, if you like to study using lexicons, if you like getting into commentaries, um, if you like getting into study helps and maps, and. Uh, both text and audio gets loaded. Um, and so Blue Letter Bible is a huge resource. And then up here in the study section, um, you might not be able to read that, but Bible commentaries, text and audio, Bible references, harmony in the Gospels, encyclopedias, introductions to the Bible, topical indexes, charts and outlines, timelines, maps and images, theological resources. You've got articles and books, women's resource, Don Stewart's theological FAQs, BLB, so forth and so on, cult information. It's loaded. Is it available on the uh, mobile app also with all of that? <clears throat> there's an i, there's a, for iDevices, iPhone, iPod, iPad, you can get this on there. Um, if you're on an Android, you can go to the website, it does have a mobile website. Um, so yes, it is loaded, you can spend hours and hours and hours on there. Um, that's just the study portion, you can still take it into, the, into a devotion section to spend time with your family or yourself uh, in devotions and lots of options to go through there. And then the last two, um, gets back to the Gospel Project. Um, this one is the, the one for students. Um, all the modules, or, or all the units, I think is what they call them, they're all $3 in the student edition. But again, what's $3? And you know, you, you buy one, and three months later, you go into another one, and three months later, you know, big deal, right? Spend some money, <clears throat> go, through your, go through the Bible with these kind of devotions and subjects with your, with your kids, with your older kids. Um, and then the last one is the adult version. Uh, this one ranges from $5 to $10. Um, but um, I've looked through these, the quality is great. Um, and so just gives you an idea. This It's not an all-inclusive list. There's much, much more out there available. Um, but hopefully this is something in which, uh, you know, maybe there's things you didn't know existed. Maybe there are ones you did. Maybe there's things you knew didn't, but uh, you're encouraged to delve deeper into um, hopefully this has been a good time of equipping and encouraging you guys and, and again just to bring it back to the why Romans 13 14 we want to put on the Lord Jesus Christ we want to make that conscious effort that we are purposefully intently looking to have Jesus Christ be be in us be wearing him in, in, in everything we do and then and then make no provision for the flesh uh, to fulfill its lusts, that we're building up those walls and those safeguards, not only for ourselves, but that we're building up walls for the family. I mean, men, fathers, grandfathers, like, we're the patriarchs of the home. We know that that's who it is. Younger guys that aren't married yet, you will be. Um, and so, take these kind of things, realize the world we're living in, and be encouraged in it, and, and these aren't um, what will defend us against the enemy, they're only tools. Uh, but just as I think it might have been, was it Joe that shared it, Joe or Ryan, where he, maybe it was Ryan, where he said that a tool is pretty much worthless apart from Christ. So put on Christ, use the tools together through God, he'll provide the victory. Amen? Yeah. All right, let's pray. Lord, thank you again for this time. Lord, would you send us away from here, uh, Lord, um, just with this laid in our heart, that we would glorify you in the way in which we walk in the way in which we lead our families. Lord, to lead our families in devotions, in study time, 
to spend time uh, giving them the word of God and feeding them the Lord and then also being fed uh, personally uh, from the word ourselves. And God, help us, Lord, with that heart to overcome any excuses not to build walls to make no provision for the, for the flesh. Lord, it is you who will uh, win the war. It is you who will gain, we will gain victory through. We thank you for this time, God. Uh, go before us, and uh, Lord, be the Lord over all aspects of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Sorry,